gratitude. The gratitude. The heart of gratitude. The heart of gratitude. Amen. Amen. And as we have read in the in the scripture, the first thing I want to let us understand is the Bible, the psalm that we read, Psalm 96, it was written by a man called Sam David. We call Psalm the Psalm of David. But he's not the one that wrote every Psalms, but he wrote Psalm 96. So we call it Psalm of David. And David was a king. And in all that David said here, it was to glorify God Almighty. David was a king, but he was telling the people, that though I am a king, for he is the one that is a king over us all. Yeah. David acknowledged God as king and as striving of glory and adoration to God. And there in pointing the people to God Almighty. Say, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. A heart of gratitude, we always sing to the Lord. A heart of gratitude, we have a new song to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray and ask the Lord. Because sometimes our challenges can be so much in our face that we could not see what God is doing. Our challenges can be so much that you feel like singing to God, but He will tell you, why do you want to sing? Don't you know what you are going through? As you are sitting, ask the Lord, say, Father, let my praise overcome my problems. my problems. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let my praise overcome my problems. Let my praise overcome my problems in the name of Jesus. Let's look at what is the issues why people can't give thanks to God. Why can't we thank God? What is the hindrances? Why we could not thank God? I'm going to look at what we should thank God for and why we should thank God. A grateful heart is always a healthy heart. A grateful heart is always a healthy heart. Because you will not allow the devil to tamper with your heart. You will not allow the devil to tamper with your spirit. You will not allow the devil to tamper with your soul. When you are grateful, you sing songs of praise every time and it comes from your heart, the Bible says. So if, if your heart is being flooded with the songs of praise, so your heart is healthy, you're not accommodating evil and evil thoughts in your heart. A heart of gratitude always appreciates God. And of course, appreciates one another. That some people, no matter what you do to them, no matter what you do for them, they don't even appreciate you. And they will tell you, Kiloshe, Kilobeko Tongbi, 
What have you done? They will not appreciate you. So if they can't appreciate human being, how can you appreciate God Almighty? And we have references of people in the Bible that no matter how their life is being rough, are offended by the enemies or by the devil or by situations, they, can, they still acknowledge God as Lord. A heart of gratitude is a heart that appreciates and give appreciation is a healthy heart. Those that appreciate the kind deeds of others are happy naturally and they live in harmony. Naturally, you'll be happy. If, listen, if you know you don't have evil thought against somebody, you'll be happy naturally. If that person has evil thought against you, when you greet that person, Conscience will greet, will greet that person. But you are happy, but you are smiling. But the person is like, why, why is she smiling? <laughs> Saying in their mind, why is she smiling? A heart of gratitude is a healthy heart. It gives you joy. I don't we have um, medical um, research by the British uh, Medical Journal. And I say too much happiness makes you unhappy. <laughs> too much of happiness makes you unhappy. But I've never seen that in the scripture. The Bible says your joy shall fool. And not until your joy is full, it cannot overrun. And not until you overrun, you cannot impact somebody else's. Amen. Because when you smile to somebody at work and they smile back at you, you have been parted and they smile. So, if your happiness makes you not unhappy, I don't know where that definition comes from. Although they might put the research together, maybe we have pastor later, all the doctors in the house, all the people that practice uh, medicine or medical in the house. And again, we have another philosophical arguments by somebody called Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud said, all of us here, including myself, we are suffering for what is called neurosis. We are suffering for neurosis. We don't know what we are doing. And neurosis means, and his argument was, because we are suffering for neurosis, which is a depression or anger, we are looking for something to lean upon, and in that sense, we build God in our heart, and we began to worship him. <laughs> we build a higher God in our mind, in our imagination, and we began to worship him. So that's what we are suffering from. But much more than that, much more than that, because they are confused already. One of his colleagues as well, Richard Dawkins. Uh, Richard Dawkins. He was in a he was in a debate with somebody, and he was trying to respond to what the person says, and he was just scratching his head. And after a few seconds, he was like, "Oh, oh my God!" <laughs> so they know that there is God. Why is he calling God to come and remind him what he has forgotten? <laughs> He has written something about God, against God, and he's not calling God to remind, God, please remind me what I've written against you to disqualify or disprove your existence. So they know that there is God. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, all the way, it says because they have disallowed, disapproved, they are not allowing themselves, their mind to be conditioned as God has built it, to accept God as Lord, he says God has left them to a reprobate mind. What are we saying? We're talking about a heart of gratitude. So God has built our heart naturally, even as we are saying in Bible study this Wednesday, God has built our life, our, our heart naturally, that we live in a good head, in a good life with one another, and have a good relationship with God. But of course we know, right from the book of Adam, they've sinned against God, and God chased them out. 
So now God has given us a will, which is a decision that you can, okay, don't worry because I'm God. I'm not going to force you. If you like, you praise me. If you like, you worship me. If you like, you don't worship me. But I tell you, what is good for you is to worship me. I, God, have created good and bad, but I tell you, what is good for you is to choose good. We're talking about a heart of gratitude. As a church, not just here, every, everywhere. What we not normally, point one, what we normally praise God for, number one is good job. Everywhere. You will see people screaming, hallelujah, 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 21 hallelujah. After I finish, God has given me a good job. Amen. Number two is marriage. Hallelujah, since I've been walking around, now I found him. I found her when I was walking on the street. I just saw the Lord just say, look at her, look at him, that is him. And I turn and I look at him and I say, the Lord says you are the one. And we come to the house and now we are married. Hallelujah. Seven hallelujah, 21 hallelujah. Naturally, we praise God for those things. I was sick in the bed and the hospital for seven days, and now God has healed me. Hallelujah. Listen, guys, these things are good, very, very good to praise God for them. But I tell you, the ones that are better to praise God for. Hallelujah! Nobody's even seen that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Everybody, help me shout them, Hallelujah! Don't worry, don't say it. Since January, I have been living a life of low faith. But coming in October, God has increased my faith. Help me shout 21, hallelujah! Everybody just be looking at you, that was wrong with you. God has increased your faith. For what? Tell us God has given you a mansion in Birmingham, in London. Then we can shout and say, wow, I claim your faith. I claim your miracle. I claim your miracle. They will claim your miracle. <laughs> Tell them how to claim your miracle is for you. Every yeah. <laughs> morning I hear me. Nobody, no Christians that comes out to scream that God has increased my faith. The second thing is, I'm talking about the uncommon praises. The second thing is, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yesterday I went out, I was able to minister to this, and to minister to this, and to minister to this, to, to, this, to the glory of God. Somebody came to me, I ministered to them, they accepted Jesus right in the spot. Let me shout 21, hallelujah! Everybody will be looking at you, as you are looking at me now, you see? I say, let me shout hallelujah, nobody shout hallelujah. It is strange in the church. It is very, very strange for us to praise God for those things. Why? Because the devil has divided our attention to things that the Bible says they are temporal. We can see somebody, number three, somebody come to the front and say, oh, battle, dance from the back to the front, screaming and shouting and shouting and shouting and shouting, my testimony is so great, my testimony is so big, my testimony is so awesome. In fact, if you hear my testimony, oh, you will say God is wonderful. What's your testimony, sister? What's your testimony, brother? And he said, my testimony is, once I was a sinner, but now God has saved me. Yesterday night, I was saved. Hallelujah! Amen. They'll be looking at you. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and they will ask you, how long have you been a Christian? Because there are a lot of Christians in the church. A pretense Christian in the church. But they don't know the meaning of salvation. And that is why you can never see anybody come out and scream that God has saved me. Or to come out and scream that I'm still in the salvation. I've been saved many years ago. I bless God for His grace is still keeping me. You can't see people coming out. Let's look at it. And of course, people complain when we have uh, problems and situations, when we have challenges, we cry about it. Like I said some time ago, it's okay to cry, it's okay to mourn. But as a Christian, we have the imbued 
of thanksgiving, of natural thanksgiving unto God. Let's look at the first Thessalonians 5.18. First Thessalonians 5.18. If you're there, you can blast it. Okay, I'll read. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances. In which circumstances? No. Is that in your Bible? Give thanks in all circumstances. This is all. In everything, give thanks. Everything. Okay. In everything, give thanks. While everything is good, give thanks. While you are facing challenges, give thanks. There are some people that the devil has just blindfolded them not to see the promises of God ahead of them so they could not give thanks. There are some people that the devil have conditioned their mind that no, you have to get this first, get this first. Get. There are some people that say, they will come to the front and they will say, I praise God, I have my testimony, I'm still coming back to give God a testimony when God has done it. Don't give God condition. There was a brother I had a story that he was praying for something. I was a very good Christian brother. But he was praying to God for something. And I was saying, God, you have to do it. God, you must do it. You know how we command God. You must do it today, today. And the brother would say, God, I give you seven days. If you don't do it, I will drop the Bible. And to him, God didn't do it. And he dropped the Bible. This is how many of us are living. Many people will say, ah, Pastor, what is the need of coming to church? I've been praying since January. This particular one thing, God hasn't done it. What is the need? What is the point of coming to church? After when I come, uh, Mama Choir, they'll be singing and shouting, and they want me to be shouting, and be singing and be clapping. What is the point? I better stay back home. God, I've been crying to you. You are here to do it. I better stay back. Pastor, please hold on to your God. Let me see family hold on to their God. And I'm going to sort out myself. But the Bible says, as a Christian, I'm talking to a body gay Christians now. As a Christian, we are meant to give thanks to God in all things, in everything. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4 15. A heart of gratitude sends a joyful sense to the whole of our body. A heart of gratitude. It makes the whole of your body to be rejoicing. The whole of your body is rejoicing. Have you seen some people that when, when, when you are, they are just agitated for nothing. When you are passing by and your body touches their body, and like, what is it, what is it, what is the problem? A heart of gratitude sends a joyful sense in the heart of your body. For all things are for your sakes, that the grace be multiplied through the many, may cause the thanksgiving to abound unto the glory of God. That he may cause the thanksgiving to abound unto the glory of God. This is Brother Paul talking to the people, and again, he was talking to the Christians. That in all that we do, we hold on to faith and trust in God. So that everything that we do in every area of our life, it doesn't, it's not in the church alone. There are some people, what they do in the church, you will see them and say, Oh, I thank God for your life, sister. I thank God for your life, brother. <laughs> but please, ask their colleague at work. Ask their colleague at work. And they will say, Are you actually a Christian? That is what they are saying to them at work. But in the church, you say, I thank God for your life. Look at what it says. It says, being multiplied through many, that may cause the thanksgiving to abound unto the, and the thanksgiving may be increased in every capacity unto God. 
Brethren, I'm encouraging us this morning that we train our hearts, that we read the word of God and give thanks to God in all things. I will not say the one step. Don't allow the unbeliever to come and tell you, ah, ma'am, ma'am, it's okay, it's going to be all right, stop, it's okay, don't worry, don't cry, it's going to be all right. That's an insult to God. When unbelievers come to tell you it's okay for something that is not little, that you can trust God for and be singing praises, and they will, they will be hearing at the outside of the door or by the door at the neighbor, and they will say, What's wrong with this person? I know what they are going through, yet they are singing, yet they are dancing, yet they are praising God. Are they crazy? Are they mad? And when they see you and you are coming out of your house, of your room, and they say, Oh, we heard you singing, sister. What about that issue? Is it be solved? You say, No, it's not be solved. But I know somebody that is solving them. <laughs> and they will look at you. This is faith, brethren. This is faith. Only those that have faith can praise God. Only those that have faith can praise God. Let's look at what the book of John 16 and the phrase says. When you give thanks, only when everything is right and rosy, then you are living in the world of fantasy. And as we are also discussing in the in the Bible study, honestly, come to Bible study, you know, it's very, very fun and challenging. <laughs> that people give, people, it's very easy for people to just give thanks to God and to just live a good life and to tell you, oh, I'm living a good life, oh, everything is good for me when everything is nice and rosy. But when they have a challenge, you can see it in their face. As soon as you see them, and they are Christian. When everything is rosy and smooth and sweet, in fact, we see their face, they will like, before you come to them, they will be the one that will come to you. But when they have one challenge in their life, you can see it in their face. And they're talking about the youth on that uh, uh, Wednesday, I mean, general, general now, general youth. Now, why is it difficult for them to accept God or to accept Jesus Christ? as a Lord and Savior. Because they believe everything is rosy. Everything is there for them. But let them fail their exam. One exam. Oh my God. Then you will see them. Then you can tell them, go and do this thing for me, they will go. Because now they are, they are sober. Okay. That time, just call them and preach Jesus to them. They will sit down. Okay. okay. Can Jesus help me to pass my exam next time? <laughs> just, just they will, they will come. This is the life we live. When everything is nice, we don't know how to praise God. We don't know where Jesus is. So people even forget about their Bible. Their Bible is dusty. So when they're invited to church, and they're coming to church on Sunday, they will not be looking for their Bible. For look at where is my Bible? We look at we go and search that under the pillow or that under the bed and it will dust it, dust it. It's even dusty, it's dusty. Because you never remember God. Everything is sweet and nice. Let's not live that kind of life as a Christian in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, I said I'll conclude this because I know we have things to do. Appreciation in affliction was a great part of Job's life that the family and friends couldn't understand. But Job does when he says, Though you slay me, yet I will praise you. Job 13 15 and Job chapter 1, chapter 5, verses 1. Brethren, in everything we go through, this is just a simple word. In everything we go through as a Christian. Let us see God in it. This is our faith. This is our life. This is our living. Shall we rise on our faith, please? Job says, 